G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today I felt like adding to my little cuddle collection. So we have already two in the collection. We have an elephant and a little cuddle pup. So today I'm adding a beautiful hippopotamus. And um, I've had the best fun with this one. It's really just the sweetest little pattern to make up. Now this is great, this series is great for diving into your stash. I promised that I would always make this collection up in fabrics only. So no felts there at all. So very um, easy to make up, a great beginner's pattern even, and intended to be a child's companion. So they're all absolutely baby safe. You can use safety eyes um, and you can replace the buttons with felt if you would rather to make it absolutely baby safe. But so many variations you can do and I know your stash is just full of colors to make up this little beauty. So I've got that free pattern ready for you. It's in the description box below. You just need to find that link. Now you can print out those pattern templates on your own home printer. I do advise you to use A4 paper and have your printer set at A4 or actual size. I've designed all of my patterns to be printed on A4 paper. There is a measuring bar on each of the pages of your pattern, so you'll be able to check that out. You want all of your pattern pieces to be absolutely right. And I include all of my seam allowances in your pattern, so you don't have to worry about that. So let's get busy and make a little hippopotamus. Now let's take a look at what we're going to need to make our little cuddle hippo. Now the body is put together exactly the same as I have done with the cuddle elephant and cuddle puppy. And I've chosen a print fabric which I have interfaced and I've got my back pieces, my two back pieces and my two front pieces. They're all exactly the same, it's just that we have markings on the back pieces. Now you do want to make sure that they are interfaced and I use a fusible woven cotton interfacing so that it's nice and flexible. Going for a really, really bright print here, bright sort of jungly print because my head and arm fabric is a, is a dull color, but it will work in well together. Now, remember I have designed this series to make entirely with fabric. So I don't use felt in these because I'm intending that these little, um, toys are being cuddled by children and the fabric will wear better than felt. So just keep that in mind. Now we then have our head pieces. So I've got a beautiful wool blend here. It's nice and soft though and I've still interfaced that. So we've got our two head pieces and you can see what I mean about the colour. It's a fantastic hippopotamus colour but it is a little dull so I'm brightening it up um, with the little bits and pieces that I do to it. So this is our center head gusset, two side head, head pieces and our center gusset that goes all the way around the top of the head. You've got some markings there, that's for the little nostrils. We use buttons and there's a little line that you mark in, mark that line in with a heat erasable marker. That's our stitching line to create a little mouth, a really simple little mouth. So in speaking of our buttons, I'm going to give you the measurement for those because it's important that they're the right size. Now, contrary to what most people depict hippopotamus toys as, they have quite small nostrils and they are set quite inward. Um, a lot of people put them out here, but they're actually set just nicely in there together. And it's important the button size is right so I'm going to give you that in the materials and requirements, the exact size there in millimetres. So you will also need foot pads for your little hippo and also some eyes. So the eyes I'm using, they're actually a nine millimetre. You can use a nine or 10 millimetre. Again, it's really sweet if you keep the eyes really small on this one. Um, because then there's a big contrast from the nostrils and it just looks super cute. So for the arms, we're going to be sewing directly on the fabric. So I've traced out my arms on doubled fabric ready to stitch. We're also going to be sewing the ears in the same fashion. I will get those drawn up when we get to there. I want to sew these first. You will be adding a tail. Now it's up to you. I just want an indication of a little tail. They have quite an ugly little tail. <laughs> hippos. Um, so I'm going to just glam it up a bit by making it pink. I'm going to just plait up some braided cord 
and pop that in a little bit of a tuft on the end and that will do just nicely. So you'll need a 45 millimeter neck joint to join that head and then it's nice and secure. You'll need your extra strong threads to match your project and of course you can add any kind of embellishment buttons along the front. I'm going to brighten mine up again with that uh, with those few little buttons there all part of that color range. I will be adding a neck ruffle to mine in the end it's just the neck ruffle that we've used on our dolls before. Um, we'll talk about that further when we get there. So for now we're going to be filling with polyester filling. For now we're going to jump in and make this body. Now the body is the same exactly the same as when I made the elephant. So I'm going to insert that footage for you now so don't be alarmed when you see those fabrics change and I will see you back here when we're ready to start making that head. Now the body that we're about to make is the body that I use for all of the animal dolls in this series. So even though the colors may change um, throughout all of the bodies put together in the same way. It just saves me having to film that section all over again each time and it will allow me to give you a whole lot more of a range in this little series. So just follow along regardless of the animal that you're making. This is how you put that body together. The first step in creating the body, we're going to take our two back body pieces and where the opening marks are, we're going to sew a close zigzag stitch on the machine on the edge there, just to bind those edges. It stops it from fraying and when we go to close that opening, it's going to be nice and neat and tidy and it won't stretch. So our next step is to create a little tail. Now I've made a plait with my yarn, just a little braid and left some ends free at the end there. I've just tied a knot in the end and stitched across here. So this is the end we're going to pop into the seam. Mine's about 13 centimeters overall. You can make it long or short or whatever you like. So we're going to be sewing the center back seams of the both the front and the back body pieces. So these are our front body pieces that don't have any marks on them. So the center front seam are these ones here. So where your mark is at the back, your opening, these are the center back and center front seams. So in the in the front pieces, we just put those right sides together and we're just going to stitch with a four millimeter seam allowance all the way down to the base there. And I do sew that two times because we're going to be adding stuffing. Do also make sure that the start and finish of all of your seams that you back and forth with a couple of stitches to secure it. So when we go to do our centre back seam in exactly the same way, of course we're not going to sew that opening. We're just going to sew from the neck edge down and back and forth and same here. But here is where our tail is going to go. So we're going to drop that in so that that's caught in between those layers in that seam as we go and do make sure that you sew back and forth over that section so that it's held well and make sure that it is all still lined up as you do that. So four millimeter seam allowance. I have my uh, jeans needle in my machine and I do have my machine stitch length set to a number two so it's nice and small. You can now go ahead once you've sewn both those seams and press them open and flat. It gives you a much better finish in the end. So this is our front and our back. So at this stage, you can go ahead and put those right sides together again. And the seam we're going to sew next is that inner leg seam. It's just a very small little seam. And you want to make sure that you've lined up that center point. So perhaps pop a clip in there or a pin and we're just going to stitch with that same four millimeter seam allowance from the base around. Make sure that you really make sure that that's really nice and secure. So that one two times that same four millimeter seam allowance. There you can see that center inside leg seam stitched and I've sewn it two times. It's nice and strong. 
and we don't clip that seam in dressmaking you would probably click that clip that seam but because in uh, soft sculpture we keep our seams very very small and so that we don't have to clip them because it would definitely compromise that seam um, once we add stuffing we need it to stay together so the next thing I've done before we put this one completely together I've added my buttons for the front I've popped my first one about five to six centimeters from that top neck edge because remember we've got pull in around that joint and you want to leave a little bit of room for a neck ruffle or perhaps a little scarf so I've got those two there so now we're going to put right sides together and we're going to sew up those side seams which of course they will match beautifully just popping my clips in there right the way down the side to the bottom of that leg and we will sew that four millimeter seam allowance two times just the same as before so the final step in putting the body together is we're going to add the foot pads to the the little base of the leg there so we're going to put right sides together it's just like pinning in just a teddy bear foot pad you can start anywhere because it's a circle so we're just going to take our pin and we're going to go through all of those layers flip it over and catch a little bit on the other side push that pin head all the way down this is the easiest way to pin in a foot pad start to follow that curve pin through both of those layers flip it over and just take a little bit up on the underside pushing the pin head down just clamps it all into place just going to make my way all the way around it'll fit in beautifully if you've kept to your four millimeter seam allowances there we go all pinned into place my next step will be to take my needle with an extra strong thread on it and I'm just going to overcast that foot pad into place so that I can remove all of my pins so I've now removed all of those pins and you see that little foot pad is, ta is tacked into place I now take um, some extra strong thread a single strand with a knot in the end and we're going to sew that foot pad into place using a stab back stitch I'm going to put the link at the top of the screen there for you to my video that shows you how to sew this stitch but I will show you a couple of stitches here so I'm coming in from the underneath with my needle and the first thing I'm going to do is just make two stitches one right on top of the other just so my start point is nice and secure and nice small stitches and so now you see how I'm holding that out flat I'm coming up from behind and just traveling along the length of one stitch and going back into my last exit hole so again I'm going to come up from the underneath traveling along a little way and back into the exit hole because it's extra strong thread we're sewing it back and front it's the strongest stitch of all for hand sewing in soft sculpture so each time you just have to make sure you go back into that exit hole so that the stitch is fully linked and you should be able to create a line that's just as accurate as you would on the machine so you can see I'm just going to make my way right the way around that foot pad and then I will just repeat with the other side you can go ahead and turn that one through once you've sewn those foot pads in and do take your time to roll out all of those seams particularly around those feet so we've got a lovely rounded finish and that's our body that's the way we put the body together on all of the animals in this series regardless of the tail that you pop in there they're all put together in the same way so now we're going to move ahead and make the arms so the arms in this case that's one that I've already made and I'm making it in the color that I'm using for the head so we've looked like we've got a nice naked little arm and this is the romper so very simple to do just pop that one aside 
and bring this one in. So I've got my piece of fabric folded right sides together. I've pressed it nice and flat and I've traced around my template, arm template, and I'm going to stitch exactly on that line all the way around. And I do reinforce the lower edge by sewing that section again. Leave that top edge open, make sure you're back and forth on your start and finish and then we'll come back to cut that one out. So now that is all stitched, I just need to cut that one out. So straight across the top there. And then I'm going to cut approximately just a four millimeter seam allowance, right, right the way around the edge. And again, we don't notch or trim this seam. We don't clip the curves because we're giving it a very small seam. We're going to be stuffing this and we don't want to pop that seam open. So before I turn this one through, because I used a heat erasable pen, I can now take that to my iron and press that and it will remove those marks. And then I'm going to turn that through. I've gone ahead and turned that arm through and now we're going to add our filling. Now, just like I have with this one, we pack the end of the arm really, really firm up to about the wrist and then soften off. You can see not much there and then nothing for about the top inch and a half because when we add it, we want the arm to sit nice and soft at the sides. If we fill it right up to the end, it'll stick out. So just go ahead and tuck that filling in that top edge there. In that opening. Easiest with forceps. Take that right down to the base there. Support the end there, but do pack that hand and wrist very firm. Continue up nice and firm and then soften it off and, and then nothing up until here. Once you get up to there, just bring those two edges together and just stay stitch on the machine across the top to hold that all together. Next, we need to go ahead and add those arms to our body at the top of the neck on each side. So you need to first of all make sure that your little hand is curving towards the front. And we're going to take this straight edge here and we're going to line it up with our centre seam, sorry, our side seam here and make sure that it is just exactly halfway. So here's my side seam and we're just going to tack it to the top. I'm just using my extra strong thread. just to hold that into place, line it up with the top exactly. And it must be right on that seam and centered so that the little arms hang correctly at the side. So these tops of these arms will be pulled in when we put the neck bolt, when we put the head on, and the arms will come out from that neck shoulder section. So it's a great way to add these simple little arms. So I've just got that exactly in place. Make sure it's very secure because the top edge here won't be seen. It'll be drawn in around that bolt. There we go. So as we pull that in around the bolt, that little arm will be caught up in that next section. So I'm going to do the same. Make sure you line it up the other side seam exactly in half and stitch the other one into place. My next step is that we sew a 
doubled strand of extra strong thread, a running stitch just four millimeters in from the edge, starting at the back, leave your tail ends hanging, and so right around that top neck edge, including those arms. So now I've tied my first knot and I'm just going to pull on those thread ends and pull that in. So we want to leave just enough room for that bolt to pass through. So just a small opening there. Our disc is 45 millimeters, so it's going to cover all of that. And then knot that off at least four times. Okay, so here I am back and I've got my little hippo doll to the same stage as you've just seen that little elephant doll. So we've got everything in place. I've added three little buttons there. Down the middle, foot pads are in place, it's all ready to go. So we can put that one aside and we're going to start work on the head. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew the ears um, because they go into the head seam. So no sewing ears on with this one, how good is that? So what I've done is I've just taken my two pieces of fabric, put them right sides together and I've traced around that pattern template. And just as we did with the arms, we're going to sew around the outside edge. You leave this bottom edge open, that's where we turn it through, and make sure you back and forth on your start and finish. So if you're using lighter colored fabric, you'd want to use a heat erasable marker for this. Mine's very dark, so it won't matter. Um, and I needed to be able to see that line. So I'm gonna get them both stitched and then we're going to cut them out. So I've just gone ahead and cut those out, just leaving a tiny seam allowance there. Mine's about three millimeters. Turn those through and make sure to push out all of those seams. I'll have to get my knitting needle in there and really roll out those seams so we've got a lovely curve. And then I just take it to my iron and I give it a good press and then I fold it in half. So bring those edges together perfectly. And just on the machine, I just stitch across, but really close to the edge within the seam allowance. And that will give you that beautiful little cup shaped ear that we're going to tuck in. So I'm gonna get the second one done. So once we've done that, we can then move ahead to the center gusset. We need to do some work on this center gusset. And the first thing, I like to do is remember we drew in that mouth line and that's we're going to do the same thing now we're going to stitch over the top of that now I always use a jeans needle in my sewing in my sewing machine and I'm going to use um, extra strong thread I'm going to put it through the bobbin and the top thread so that when I stitch this line mouth line it's going to be quite heavy and noticeable and I am using this color because it's just going to work in with my project. Now, usually you'd use a darker color, but because my fabric's quite dark, I have to go for a lighter, a lighter tone. It's just something to mark out that cute little smiley lip line, and it does make all the difference to the finished um, little hippo face. So I will actually stitch it probably three times. So I'll go across, back, and back again, stitching right on top of each other. Um, to make sure that it's really, really obvious. So I'm gonna get that done first. So there you can see that nice mouth line stitched in. Our next step is to add the nostrils, which are our buttons. Now, if you want this to be completely baby safe, then you can cut two pieces of felt with some fusible webbing applied to the back, and you could pop those on there instead, and you can blanket uh, applique stitch around them, or stitch a satin stitch on the machine. But if you're making something for a child who's over three years of age, of course, the buttons are perfectly suitable. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to stitch them into place and you really want to make sure you've got your marks there on your template. Make sure that they are perfectly centered so they're in exactly the right spot because the eyes go up here higher. And that has our work on our head gusset all done. They look like little eyes at the moment, don't they? So we can put that one aside and we're going to add the ears to our side head pieces now that we've got those nicely done. So you've got marks on your pattern templates that show you where that ear starts. Remember that the opening of the ear faces towards the front and we're going to start the ear right on that mark. 
it's super important that you do this exactly the same on each side so that when we put the head together the ears are lined up so you can see there I've kept it lined up with that mark and I'm just going to stitch it in place you can do it on the machine again just over that line of stitching again um, or you can just do it quickly by hand whatever suits you best we'll get those in place and then we'll put this head together so with those ears in place now we're now going to start assembling we're going to take our head gusset we're going to put right sides together now the the large end of the head gusset of course this is the lower front part of the face we're going to line up that bottom line there and we're going to pin this into place now I'm working on the head gusset I'm not doing it from the side headpiece it's very important you can see I'm going to make those edges meet by pulling them around as I go I'm pinning through all the layers flipping it over taking up just a little bit on the other side and pushing that pin head all the way down it makes it much easier it's pinning in 3D this way through all the layers flip it over take your pin head all the way down then you don't have pins sticking up it makes it easier for when we're going to overcast this so you can see and what I'm doing too is that this piece is designed and cut so long as you keep to your seam allowances that this fits perfectly so I don't want you to be stretching it to pull it don't be stretching it as you go just let it lay into place just very gently let it follow that line and then you'll get it all nice and even remember because we've got two little ears set in we want them to be lined up so no stretching at this point I'm going to pin it right the way down to the back neck edge so you can see how nicely that all comes together and lines up all the way down lining up perfectly at the back neck edge so as I said don't work on the side panel work on the head gusset it's much easier now through this section where the ears are inserted to the seam it's really important that we make sure that when we sew that seam that the ears are well incorporated your seam allowance is four millimeters but before I take this to the machine I will overcast that whole seam with my extra strong thread that will allow me to take the pins out and of course then it's easy to sew that seam I'll sew that one two times one right on top of the other and remember it's a four millimeter seam allowance and go back and forth over this ear section a couple of times once you've done that you just repeat with the opposite side and when you're pinning it in again you want to be absolutely certain that the ears are lined up so that when we turn it through that they're sitting exactly where they should okay so I've gone ahead and turned that head through and really rolled out all those seams there's so many curves on this little one you need to make sure that they're well rolled out you can see we've got that lovely little hippo shape happening now I've decided to use safety eyes in mine because I really do want to demonstrate that look and I do want you to see that it can be very very child friendly so but you can of course use glass eyes if you want to so to use safety eyes we need to temporarily fill that head first so that we get the exact eye placement spots now you can't do this previous to putting the head together no matter how clever you think you might be um, trust me don't ever do it don't guess and just pop them in you'll be very very disappointed so it's just a matter of filling the head out just very quickly you don't have to have it firm packed by any means but you just need it to be pushed out and even so that we can see where those eyes will sit okay so there I've got that head just filled out it's quite soft but I've got it all in proportion and now I can pop those eye tester pins in and check where I want those eyes to sit now they sit wider apart than the nostrils that's very important so they sit almost on the seam line here here's the uh, the deepest curve and they sit just above that so eye position is really super important with any little animal that you make so 
You can see there, got that lovely expression and those little eyes. So I am just going to use, you can use either a nine millimeter or a 10 millimeter safety eye, totally up to you, but I wouldn't go larger than a 10 millimeter because then it starts to interfere with the size of the nostrils. So of course, all you need to do is take your awl and your knitting needle, make your holes through at each of those spots, unstuff the head, and then just add your safety eyes with the clamp on behind. Then we're gonna go ahead and fully stuff this head nice and firm. And here's my little hippo head all filled out. Now, those little curves I've designed and put in there for a reason. You want to make sure that you fill them out with your stuffing. When you're filling something with stuffing, you're not just filling a hole, you're making a shape. So we want these beautiful pronounced front cheeks here, front part of the muzzle. Ideally, what should happen is these should come out and you should get a little bit of a recess in here. And then we've got that lovely domed top of the head, make sure it's all filled out. And of course, your ears should be beautifully placed, which they are, nice balanced head. So now I have gone ahead and I've taken my wool felting needle. You can see just how far from the surface I filled that and I've packed it all in nice and flat. It's quite a flat base on this head to keep all of that lovely width of that jaw. So I've now taken my double strand of extra strong thread and I've sewn a running stitch just five millimeters in from the neck edge, starting at the back and leaving the tail ends hanging. I've tied one knot ready and we're going to add that neck joint. So we're just going to slip that in and get that in nice and flat, make sure it's in the center then we can pull on those threads and we're going to pull it right in as tight as we can around that neck bolt. Now it doesn't have to touch the bolt and you do want to add some pressure while you're pulling that in. Keep it pulled right in. Usually I get somebody help me and, and put a thumb on that knot. Knot that off at least four times. I've still got my needle on. So I then like to go around another time and knot that off again before snipping those thread ends. With that head all tied off now, we're ready to add that to the body. So we've already pulled in that neck edge and we're going to be able to take that bolt just straight through, make sure everything's nice and flat. And we're gonna slip the corresponding disc inside there. Make sure nothing's caught up. We're going to add our washer And then our nut. Just finger tighten first and make sure everything's pulled out. Make sure that those arms are sitting correctly either side. So they're pulled out nicely. Nothing's caught up, everything's nice and even. And then you can go ahead and tighten up that nut with your spanner or whatever tool you're using. And then we will go ahead and add just one drop of super glue in those threads so that nut will never come adrift. With that head in place, now all we need to do is stuff that body. Now I do feel mine quite firm. You can make it firm, you can make it squashy, depending on the look that you're going for, but do fill out all of his curves nicely and make sure that the, the foot section, those foot pads are nicely filled out. We're gonna get it all filled up and also up around that neck joint, make sure you support that head. And we're going to use our felting needle just to tap all of that in nice and tidy and then we'll come back and close that opening. My little hippo is all filled out. You see, I've packed mine quite firm. Look at that little bottom. Okay, so now we're ready to close this opening. Now I'm going to be doing that with a single strand of extra strong thread. I'm going with the red. I could have chosen any color, but I think red will work best. Whenever you're closing an opening, if you don't have a perfect match, thread match to your color, always go darker. Um, because your seams are naturally um, in, a, in, a, in a sort of a, a, a recess. So it's naturally darker in the seam. So that just makes sense. If you use a lighter color, the, your closing will be way more obvious. So I hope that makes sense. Just a little tip there. 
So now I'm going to take my needle. I've got a whole pile of knots in the end, a great big pile of knots there. And I'm going to start with a, or closing this opening with a ladder stitch. Do check out my videos um, for all the basic stitches. I'll put the link at the top of the screen there for you for the ladder stitch. And that really shows you up close, but I'm going to give you a little look at it here. So there's our first stitch. Then we're going to cross straight over to the opposite side. I'm going to spin my little hippo around. And you want to get yourself in a really comfortable position to do this too, which isn't what I'm doing now. Um, I usually do them across my lap. I find that the easiest. So I'm just traveling down on the other side, the length of one stitch. So now we've got a stitch going across. I'm going to pull in that and that's already going to pull that in. Now I'm going to jump back across and I'm going to go into that first entry hole that we made and I'm going to take one stitch down. Again, pull that through, give it a squeeze and those edges are going to start to come together. So now I'm going to go back across and each time you're going to go into the last exit hole so that the stitch is completely linked. Keep your stitches nice and even as you go down either side, otherwise you'll find you're taking up more fabric on one side than the other. And when you get to the bottom, you will have a little bit of puckering. So we don't want that. Pulling that in as we go, always pulling on those threads as you go. They'll relax a little as you let them go, but it has memory and it will pop back. Again, keeping my stitches nice and even. You can um, replace this needle if you find it easier. You can use a curved needle. So a curved needle, once you get used to them, it's really easy to tuck in and out. So totally up to you. I find this is quite accessible just with a normal needle. And I'm just going to travel back and forth all the way down until this opening's closed. So that completes our beautiful little hippo. Hasn't she come together lovely? This one's my favorite so far in this series, but I do say that, that about every new creation. Now what I've gone ahead and done there, I've just added a neck ruffle. That neck ruffle is available on my one of my original bunny doll patterns way back. You'll have to scroll way back. It's just a simple little neck ruffle and it really does finish them off beautifully. I like them to have something around their neck and you can put anything you like, even just a ribbon or a bow. It does make it, finishes it off beautifully. So that is the third in the series. And of course, we already have Elephant and she also has that lovely neck ruffle. So I've got two little girls there. Are you gonna stand there, Miss Elephant? You are, okay. And we have, of course, we've got our little beautiful little pup. Now the little puppy has the bandana. So you can also, you could add a bandana, you could do all sorts of things there. I've made mine a little girl. And of course, if you use a lighter fabric on that head and arms, you're gonna get a completely different effect. Really cute, but I did so love that fabric. So keep in mind those beautiful wool blends. They work very well with these dolls. So I, I'm excited for the next one. I love this series. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm super excited to see your versions of my beautiful little cuddle hippo doll. So thank you all for joining me today. I have had the best last couple of days putting this little hippo together. I hope you have as much fun with her. If you have enjoyed this video, you could give me a thumbs up. That would be absolutely beaut. Now come along and join our Facebook page because we've got lots going on there. You can see everybody else's creations. Anything you make with my patterns, whether it be masterclass or right here on Pay It Forward, you can share on that page. You'll get all sorts of encouragement. We're a happy group. And I also have given my Instagram account a big old facelift and there's a lot of fun things happening there. You'll see behind the scenes work, me going through projects, getting projects ready for you all, some sneaky peeks as well. So just a whole lot of fun. So come and check it out and I will be posting um, your work, my favourite works that I see, something that just catches my eye. I'll be posting those 
on my Instagram story. So I hope you come and join me there. Thank you for your response, everybody, to my little Chanel poodle. I'm glad you like her. If you want to come and join my masterclass, I'll pop the link down there below. In the meantime, just continue to enjoy the Pay It Forward projects. There are a couple of Christmas ones coming. There are. They won't be typical, but they will be Christmas themed. So I hope you'll enjoy them. Look forward to those. Everybody have a fantastic creative week. Stay safe and pay all of those good things forward. Until next time, it is Huru from me.